Welcome to YUKU Animation Channel. Legend has it that cats are the guardians of humans. When you are sad, they heal your soul. When you are restless, a simple meow can bring you back to peace. Why did the ancient Egyptians worship cats? Could they truly be some kind of primordial deity? In 2023, renowned evolutionary biologist, Dr. Jonathan, claimed that while scientific research on dogs is modern, our understanding of cats remains in the dark ages. For instance, why do cats meow only at humans? Among all the creatures in nature, why do cats choose to be close to humans? It seems as though some unseen force is orchestrating the relationship between humans and cats. Dr. Jonathan compiled his research into a book titled, The Multiverse of Cats. In this book, he unveils a mysterious world of cats, shrouded in enigma. Today, we will follow Dr. Jonathan's research and explore this mysterious realm. Whether you have a cat or not, you must be familiar with the sound of meowing. However, Dr. Jonathan's research challenges common beliefs. Cats only meow at humans. Think back, have you ever heard feral cats fighting? It's not a meow, is it? You probably haven't seen feral cats fight because that soft kitty on your lap is actually a predator in the wild. They resolve conflicts with speed and agility, never wasting a single sound unless it's with a human. Dr. Jonathan notes that apart from the eerie growls during cat fights, adult cats rarely meow at each other. Even the notoriously vocal Siamese cats have been observed to meow only when seeking a companion or expressing curiosity, more as an exclamation rather than the sweet, tender meows they reserve for human interaction. Why is this the case? Scientists are as puzzled as you are. To delve into this mystery, numerous experiments have been conducted. In 2002, Dr. Lee at Cornell University collected 100 different cat meows, sounds made when cats were being friendly to humans, about to be fed, or being petted. He then asked a group of students to listen to these sounds and rate their feelings from 1 to 7, ranging from joyful to tense. Surprisingly, the accuracy rate was only 34%. This means that humans' ability to interpret cat meows is barely better than random guessing. So, is it possible that meowing is not truly a form of communication with humans? By examining these questions and more, Dr. Jonathan's book leads us through the enigmatic universe of cats, urging us to reconsider everything we thought we knew about our feline friends. Isn't this counterintuitive? Yes, in 2015, a British team replicated Dr. Lee's experiment. This time, they used pairs of cats and their owners. And then, the miracle happened. The owners could identify their own cat's sounds with an accuracy rate of 60%, but their accuracy for other cats dropped below 25%. What does this imply? According to Dr. Jonathan, back in 1895, two seasoned American cat lovers and authors published the Cat Language Bible, matching various cat sounds to human words. For 130 years, this book has been regarded as a Bible. But now, scientific research seems to suggest it's useless. Each cat's meows are specifically encrypted for their owner. There's no universal cat language. The more we study, the more confusing it gets. So, could the next research topic provide an indirect answer to this mystery? Many people say the most satisfying moment of petting a cat is when they start purring. But what exactly is purring? Forget lions and tigers for a moment. Take Mongolian throat singing as an example. What do you feel? Fear from a mysterious shaman, awe from natural justice. Exactly. Throat sounds are associated with lion roars and tiger growls, ancient descriptions of terrifying low-frequency sounds. One might even say all natural throat sounds are intimidating. However, when it comes to cats, there are countless eight-hour compilations of cat purrs online for you to enjoy. Why are we not only unafraid of these throat sounds, but actually find them soothing? Dr. Jonathan recorded some experiments. First, while playing and petting cats, they emitted a happy purr, which he noted as a satisfaction purr. Then, in an unusual turn, the researcher lays in What's bed and didn't feed the cat What's all that shit? Time. The cats first paced anxiously beside the bed, then jumped up and started purring. He labeled this as a solicitation purr. Delving deeper into solicitation purrs, the researcher discovered they resemble the cries of human infants. 
Healthy baby cries usually range from 300 to 600 Hz, and cat solicitation purrs fall within this same frequency. It seems cats are tapping into our instincts, mimicking human babies to get what they want. How bizarre is that? Who taught them this? It's their instinct. Here are two samples of solicitation purrs. Do you feel that genetic response, especially new parents? It's uncanny, isn't it? An even stranger conclusion has emerged. In 2001, experts discovered that this purring sound can actually promote bone healing and help alleviate pain and swelling. If this can barely be explained by the survival rules of feline animals in the wild, where they frequently suffer injuries and fractures, then a 2009 study on how owning a cat can help mitigate fatal cardiovascular diseases is even more perplexing. Research confirms that a cat's satisfaction per can reduce the risk of stroke and heart disease in humans by about one-third. Seeing your cat as a shaman, its purring is not just a sign of contentment, but a blessing, giving you healing power. Even Dr. Jonathan says, next time your cat purrs on your lap, remember to say thank you. It's truly healing you. As for the mystery Dr. Jonathan proposed, let's forget it, it only gets deeper. Dr. Jonathan decided to explore another direction. If you have a cat, you've surely seen this. Cats staring blankly, alternately kneading with their front paws, often accompanied by purring. Especially when they need something soft, this behavior can last for several minutes. Dr. Jonathan calls this kneading and observes that it often happens on soft human bellies. For example, a kitten and a baby doing this on TV can melt the hearts of millions. But what's the real intention and reason behind this behavior? Scientists are still puzzled. Some say it's because their ancestors lived in areas with lots of dry grass and leaves, and they had to need a spot to sleep comfortably. But this doesn't explain why kneading often happens after cats wake up. Others suggest that cats have rich scent glands between their toes, and kneading leaves their scent, marking their territory similar to dogs lifting their legs against poles. However, Dr. Jonathan speculates that kneading might be a form of neotini. Observations show that kittens knead most often while nursing, possibly to stimulate milk flow from their mother. As adults, due to the principle of neotini in feline genes, they continue this behavior. But what is neotini? Remember our episode on pandas? Pandas and orcas, nature's tough guys, appear as big-eyed, juvenile beings to humans. We love this because humans themselves are neotenous creatures. Look at this comparison between a young chimpanzee and an adult chimpanzee. They look completely different. But humans and human infants look very similar, big heads, big eyes, and chubby faces. We love nature's neotini. Let's continue our discussion on the continuation of juvenile traits, also known as neotini. For example, take the black-footed cat, one of the most formidable nocturnal predators. Yet, it appears soft, cute, and In the wild, however, the behavior of kneading or making biscuits might serve as a form of warning. When a wild cat begins kneading, it signifies that the area is safe, possibly due to the presence of a mature, breeding female. We might see both kittens and adult cats as harmless, but in the wild, Creatures like venomous snakes and small birds know the formidable presence of an adult cat. Additionally, the scent glands located between a cat's toes release signals that spread across the vicinity, warning small animals within a few meters of the presence of a carnivorous predator. Dr. Jonathan also observed that kneading behavior is not exclusive to domestic cats. It occurs in African wild cats, margays, and leopard cats, among other adult feline species, often accompanied by purring. This type of purring, if you listen closely, differs from the previously mentioned types. It has a growling undertone, similar to a tiger's low roar, which conveys a clear warning to all around. However, to humans, this sound is perceived entirely differently. What nature intended as a warning has transformed into something we find endearing and cute. Dr. Jonathan has decided to switch to a simpler topic for his next study, such as why 90% of ginger cats are overweight. During the summer of the previous year, Thailand experienced soaring temperatures and severe drought, leading to poor rice harvests. The local government, after much deliberation, decided to seek help from cats. 
This practice is deeply traditional. For centuries, during times of drought, a special cat princess parade has been held. In this ceremony, a Siamese cat is carried on a palanquin by two bearers, with the palanquin adorned with five pairs of candles and five pairs of flowers. People then fervently pray to the cat princess, asking for rain. The parade proceeds with much fanfare, and as it moves through the streets, people splash water on the sacred cat, hoping to invoke rain. However, human experts in Thailand noted that cats generally dislike water, a fact we've discussed in previous episodes of Cat Chats. Scientists have confirmed that cats are hydrophobic, making this traditional practice somewhat inhumane. So, what did they do? To our amazement, the most recent Cat Princess Parade featured a fluffy Doryman instead. While Doryman is technically a robot cat, it's a bit surprising they didn't use his sister, considering it's supposed to be a princess parade. After all, Doryman is known for his love of Doriaki and is more of a brother figure. All right, let's not stray too far. What does this story have to do with the mystery of 10 orange cats, 9 fat ones? This tale serves as a prelude to a mystery unraveled by Dr. Jonathan. Since the age of five, he has had his first cat, and up to now, he has raised eight. He has a particular fondness for Thailand's national treasure, the Siamese cat. However, upon seeing this news, he suddenly realized that the color and patterns of Siamese cats are incredibly diverse, a phenomenon that is completely absent in their ancestor, the North African Hi. wild cat. Scientifically speaking, this is a result of unnatural artificial selection. Dr. Jonathan also discovered that as early as the 1300s, Thailand had a book titled On Cats. This book, based on Thai customs, categorized 23 types of Siamese cats into two groups, 17 auspicious and 6 inauspicious. The most famous among them was a type called the Moon Diamond Siamese Cat, which looks almost exactly like the modern Siamese cat and is considered a national treasure in Thailand. There was also a type that was entirely black except for a white ring around its neck, called the Jewel Ring, a pure white cat with only a black belt around its waist, called the Pearl Cloth, and another known as Zhu Yu, or Brass, which we now refer to as the Fat Orange. Then Dr. Jonathan looked at his own orange Abyssinian and wrote, 10 orange cats, 9 fat ones. This could be attributed to human-driven evolution. There is a concept in biology called negative frequency-dependent selection. Simply put, it means that rarer appearances are more favored. Why would a cat be orange? It doesn't make much sense, except maybe to camouflage itself in a pumpkin patch by pretending to be a giant pumpkin. This is a bold reverse camouflage. Look at those criminals in the US. They wear orange jumpsuits to court. This reverse camouflage means being a top cat, a feline leader with tattoos. Because humans rarely see orange top cats, they tend to favor them when they do, leading to their selective breeding. Then, by a twist of fate, a gene called a signaling peptide, yes I see, got unlocked in them. Humans also have this gene. It determines the coat color of mammals and their fatness. Why are Northern Europeans, who generally have more reddish hair, usually fatter than Asians with darker hair? Look at the orange cat, it's the same principle. Thus, through human breeding and selection, an orange cat is born. We find them adorably fat, but in reality, they are the feline equivalents of underbosses in a mafia hierarchy. So, Dr. Jonathan finally used his expertise in evolutionary biology to explain a mystery for us. However, next up is another myth about cats catching mice, and Dr. Jonathan is here to help us break the common notions again. Curiosity killed the cat. They are naturally curious about moving things, just as no cat can resist the lure of a light spot. For ages, experts with a limited understanding of cats have told us that cats originated in the farming era of Mesopotamia. With the advent of human agricultural civilization, enormous granaries were built, and the mice that stole grain became the first to attract cats to human communities. But is this really true? Dr. Jonathan believes that cats are less effective at catching mice compared to ferrets, so he doubts that early agriculture turned wild cats into pets. He then introduced an intriguing experiment. In 2018, 
Dr. Michael set up numerous hidden cameras at an industrial waste recycling station in Brooklyn, New York. He released 100 microchipped mice into the area, hoping to capture exciting cat and mouse games on film. However, over the next 79 days, there were 259 encounters between cats and mice. Cats chased mice only 20 times, and of these, 17 merely following mice without any intent to catch them. There were only three instances of active mouse hunting by cats, and just two resulted in a kill, both due to mice stumbling into dead ends be and go hard So, has the story of cats catching mice been a myth all along? While cats are curious and love chasing light spots, they don't actually enjoy catching mice. This raises a bigger question. If cats aren't great at catching mice, how did they originate? Who knows? Dr. Jonathan inadvertently dug himself a big hole with this question, and now he has to find a way to fill it. Dr. Jonathan turned his attention to Egypt and Shangxi. In the legends and archaeological findings of these regions, clues about the origin of cats have emerged. One might fall in love at first sight with these adorable, fierce-looking little creatures. But wait, that's not a cat, it's a leopard cat, a ferocious wild animal. It's said that if you encounter a leopard cat in the wild, it will stare at you like a stone, calculating the best way to attack. Leopard cats are fierce hunters, preying on squirrels, fish, and birds. Also known as the stone tiger, their fur is marked with coin-like patterns, similar to those of a leopard. They are highly aggressive. Even the Bengal cat, which can be kept as a pet, has only 1-8th of the leopard cat's bloodline and is notorious for being destructive. Attempting to domesticate a stone tiger is out of the question. In Dr. Jonathan's research, he discovered that in 2016, two cat skeletons dating back over 5,300 years were unearthed in Quanhukan, Shangxi, China. The stomachs of these cats contained undigested food, primarily millet, with one cat's diet consisting almost entirely of millet. This is significant evidence of domestication, as cats in the wild are strict carnivores and would only eat plants if domesticated. However, genetic testing revealed a startling truth. What were the people of Shangxi doing 5,300 years ago? These weren't domestic cats, they were leopard cats. What was the purpose of keeping them? There must have been some benefit to the community. If it wasn't for practical reasons like catching mice or snakes, it could only have been for psychological comfort, like petting a cat to relieve stress. But petting a leopard cat? Have you ever seen anyone pet a leopard? That seems highly unlikely. Have you ever wondered why Middle Eastern tycoons still keep cheetahs as pets? To understand this, let's travel back in time. Dr. Jonathan proposes that the practice of keeping big cats, like cheetahs in the Middle East and stone tigers in Shangxi, China, has its roots in ancient symbolism. These animals were not just pets but symbols of power, much like religion. Imagine this. 5,300 years ago, while Shangxi was rising to prominence, Egypt was on the brink of being unified by Pharaoh Narmer. In such times, power, strength, and charisma were highly coveted. Rulers needed religion, religion needed gods, and gods needed miracles. Hence, ferocious big and small cats appeared by the ruler's side, tamed only momentarily to showcase their might. Fast forward to 4,000 years ago, and ancient Egyptian pharaohs discovered that a certain species of North African wildcat seemed to understand humans, showing signs of domestication. These wildcats began appearing more frequently in Egyptian art, texts, and jewelry. By 3,500 years ago, these cats had become common elements in Egyptian murals, depicted lounging or eating near humans, signaling their domestication. DNA evidence confirms that today's house cats are descendants of these North African wildcats. By 3,000 years ago, these cats were intertwined with the goddess Bada, living a life of luxury as her divine embodiment. They roamed the temples, revered by the people. When a cat died, the household would mourn by shaving their eyebrows. Archaeologists have even uncovered 300,000 mummified cats at Bastet's temple. This staggering number reveals yet another layer of Egypt's cat worship, a tale for another time. But the glory of the cat goddess Badet faded quickly after the Roman invasion. 
Cats returned to their status as pets and, through ancient trade routes, spread across the globe. This is Dr. Jonathan's hypothesis on the religious origin of cats. However, even after discussing many cat mysteries, Dr. Jonathan notes that apart from all house cats originating from North African wildcats, little is certain about these enigmatic creatures. Another intriguing okay. aspect of cats is their unique communication okay. via tail movements, a behavior that remains puzzling. Numerous online videos suggest that by observing the position and motion of a cat's tail, owners can discern their pet's emotions and intentions. For example, a high tail signifies happiness and confidence, a serpentine motion by the play, a drooping tail with wide swings indicates irritation, and a tail tucked between the legs shows submission. While it seems normal for animals like dogs to express emotions through their tails, Dr. Jonathan highlights that this phenomenon is quite rare. Among felines, only domestic cats and lions use their tails for emotional communication. Other big cats, such as tigers and leopards, and even the ancestors of domestic cats, the North African wild cats, do not. So, where did domestic cats learn to use their tails? Dr. Jonathan speculates that it might be related to social behavior. Lions, for instance, hunt in groups and need to communicate, hence their tail signals. Other solitary big cats, like tigers and leopards, do not have this need. Similarly, dogs' ancestors, wolves, are social animals and use tail signals. Humans, though tailless, have evolved other communication methods, like the scara of our eyes, facial expressions, and body language. Watch my eyes is a unique human expression, as no other animals have visible scara to convey such nuances. Domestic cats, lacking social hunting behaviors, might have developed tail signaling due to their dense populations around human settlements. Over thousands of years, large numbers of cats gathering around human waste and food led to a complex communication network. Meowing was reserved for humans, while tails became perfect for long-distance signals among cats. This is Dr. Jonathan's theory. However, if you visited Japan 200 years ago, you'd find cats without tails. The Japanese bobtail is still common in Japan today. What's the story behind this? To understand, we delve into another mysterious realm of cats, cultural and historical significance. Consider this lesser-known depiction of The Last Supper, more complete than Leonardo da Vinci's famous version. Here, we see the feet of Jesus and the betrayer Judas accompanied by a black cat. Historically, the Roman church forbade cat ownership. 800 years ago, Pope Gregory IX believed black cats were incarnations of Lucifer. In 1233, he issued a decree that Satan would appear as a cat during Mass. 200 years later, during the darkest days of the Middle Ages, cats became symbols of witchcraft. Today, Belgium still celebrates a strange tradition called Cat Throwing Day, a remnant of those times. However, like the modern Pope who now loves cats, this festival has transformed into a celebration of cats. Looking back at ancient Chinese history, remember the late repentance of Empress Wu Zetian? To seize power, she brutally killed concubine Xiao Xu, who cursed her with a feline vengeance, promising to turn the Wu family into mice for cats to torment. Haunted by this curse, Wu Zetian banned cats from the palace and eventually moved from Chang'an to Luoyang, seeking peace from the eerie cat cries. But why did this story make Empress Wu Zetian so apprehensive? It turns out that the legend of the demon cat is not just a baseless tale. During the Sui and Tang dynasties, China indeed had a practice of creating demon cats. It is said that Emperor, one of Sui's brother-in-law, Dou Jianda, had a maid skilled in making demon cats. These demon cats could not only kill people but also transfer the wealth and luck of the deceased to their owner. Do Jenda ordered the maid to use demon cats to amass wealth and even used them to control his empress sister. However, when he attempted to control his brother-in-law, Emperor Wen, using demon cats, the plot was uncovered. The emperor's investigation implicated tens of thousands of people, and the case was horrifying, akin to the legend of refining 10,000 spirits. After the case broke, the Sui dynasty enacted laws to prohibit the raising of demon cats or teaching their dark arts. 
Those who knew but did not report were exiled for 3,000 miles. Fortunately, as mentioned in the story of the cat tree god, during the late Tang Dynasty, a talented storyteller named Duan Chengshi wrote a popular book called Miscellaneous Morsels from Yu Yang. In it, he included a story called The Golden Coin Cat, which redeemed the image of cats. Duan Chengshi said that many merchants believed if a cat washed its face and raised its paws over its ears, it signaled an impending visit from a guest. From then on, the legend of the demon cat in China gradually transformed into the concept of the lucky cat. In Japan, however, due to the late Tang period's isolation, Duan Chengshi's stories did not spread. Instead, the early stories of demon cats terrified them. Consequently, Japanese culture developed the legend of the Bakaniko, a cat that, upon reaching nine years old, would have its tail split. These cats, without the need for dark arts, would leave their homes, enter the mountains, continue their training, and transform into Bakaniko, creatures that could steal lives and luck. The most fearsome Bakaniko had nine tails, requiring 81 years to transform. At this time, a natural genetic mutation produced short-tailed cats. Without tails, they wouldn't split and turn into Bakaniko. Thus, generations of breeding led to the birth of the Japanese bobtail. By 1712, the first German expert to enter Japan noted in his journal, this is a breed of cat kept by the Japanese, with black and white large round spots, a tail curled like it was broken, completely uninterested in mice, and bringing immense joy to women who hold and pet them. It seems that the love for cats is ingrained in human genes, and no terrifying legend can stop it. As Dr. Jonathan shared, a 2016 Italian study found numerous cat graves in an ancient Viking port. This might indicate that after a fierce raid, those formidable Viking warriors, upon returning to their ships, would gently stroke a cat's head, thanking the chief god Odin for his gift. In Norse mythology, two large cats were responsible for pulling the chariot of the goddess Freya. Thor, the god of thunder, once arm wrestled with a giant cat and was defeated. Research indicates that Vikings favored orange cats, likely because they bred them to resemble the mythical large cats. Observing the regions with a high concentration of orange cats reveals a map that traces yeah! all the American cats. This discovery is truly fascinating. Returning to the present, let's share one last intriguing story. Why did Dr. Jonathan write such a detailed and rich book about cats? This seems unusual because Dr. Jonathan is a leading authority in evolutionary biology, specifically studying reptiles and lizards. He is nicknamed the Lizard Man and is arguably the most knowledgeable person about lizards on Earth. So why did this lizard expert publish a best-selling book about cats in 2023? Considering the current global conflicts and turmoil, one might recall deeper urban legends. Could it be that cats, lizards, and dragons are all ancient beings, guardians of humanity? In this chaotic world, cats might need to reappear to help us set aside our differences and embrace their healing powers, guiding the world toward peace. That's all for today's story. Thank you, everyone.